There have unfortunately been a lot of headlines recently about the new CEO of National Public Radio, Catherine Marr. A lot of these headlines are coming from claims made by conservative activist Chris Rufo, who's known as sort of a culture warrior who likes to stoke public outrage against people he believes to be leftists and who he thinks are poisoning our institutions. Rufo's latest target before Marr was Claudine Gay, Harvard's president. You might remember I alluded to that controversy in my video about Bill Ackman and his statements about Wikipedia. There's this group of billionaires who seem to have way too much time to spend on Twitter and who seem sympathetic to Rufo's right-wing goals, and they help to amplify these types of campaigns. In the case of Gay, Bill Ackman was one of the most prominent. In the case of Marr, Elon Musk has now been joining this campaign, claiming that she is blatantly sexist and racist and one of the worst people in America. This is no huge surprise given Elon Musk's long history of animosity towards both NPR and Wikipedia, although it is surprising to see media outlets who really should know better pretending this is about anything other than his own personal grudges. Now, Marr was named as CEO of NPR in January and took the position in March, which I assume is when Rufo started digging through her past tweets and statements to try to find things to use against her. This whole blow up is not about any controversial statement that Marr made recently, but instead based on tweets and statements that she made back in like 2020. And a lot of those statements were taken out of context from talks that she was giving about Wikipedia specifically and the way Wikipedia handles issues around truth and verifiability. Now, I was a little hesitant to make this video at all because Catherine Marr explains the nuance around the things she was saying pretty well in the talks and interviews that are being quoted out of context. I think that really only emphasizes that Chris Rufo and the media outlets who are amplifying his campaigns without providing any context or fact-checking clearly don't care about Mars' actual beliefs, but just want the outrage. I don't think anything that I can say will change that, because if they actually wanted to understand what Mar believes, they'd just listen to what she said. The goal here is pretty clear to take things out of context to try to paint Marr as some kind of screeching radical leftist. And more importantly, to attack publicly funded media like NPR. But even if I can't convince Rufo and the New York Times and the other outlets who are republishing his statements, maybe I can help shed a little bit of light on some of the stuff that she said from the perspective of a Wikimedian who is really familiar with the context of what she was describing. Now, if we start with the tweets that have been highlighted, no reasonable person would say that these are the tweets of a radical leftist. I mean, Democrat, sure, but they're pretty much standard hashtag resist type tweets that were like all over Twitter in 2020 or so. And some of them are pretty cringy. Um, if I dreamed about Kamala Harris, I don't think you could torture that information out of me. But cringy tweets justify like a Twitter dunking, not Rufo starting a nationwide campaign to get you ousted from your job and NPR defunded. Rufo and others are making statements that CEOs should not have strongly held political beliefs, but that kind of argument is really just not based in reality. Until we start replacing CEOs with robots, CEOs are gonna have political beliefs. And even claiming to not have a political belief is a political belief. Rufo and allies also seem to widely accept other CEOs with very strong political beliefs, like Elon Musk, who himself has been joining this campaign against a CEO who just has different political beliefs. Now, some have tried to justify this blatant hypocrisy by claiming that it's okay because he's not the CEO of a media company. Even if we put aside Musk's own claims that Twitter is a media organization or a company that's going to compete with or oust traditional media, these people also seem to really overstate the role of CEOs at companies like NPR, where they generally have very little involvement with editorial decisions. And these people also ignore the fact that there are many executives at other news outlets who hold strong political beliefs that are just ones they agree with. But her fairly run-of-the-mill tweets are really not why I'm making this video. Let's dig into some of her statements about truth. 
Fox News published a headline claiming that she believes that, quote, reverence for the truth is a distraction. This was taken from a TED Talk she gave in 2022, which was shortly after she left the Wikimedia Foundation. I'll play this clip with a little bit more context that any reputable news outlet would have included. Because in our normal lives, these contentious conversations tend to erupt over disagreement about what the truth actually is. But the people who write these articles, they're not focused on the truth. They're focused on something else, which is the best of what we can know right now. And after seven years of working with these brilliant folks, I've come to believe that they are onto something, that perhaps for our most tricky disagreements, seeking the truth and seeking to convince others of the truth might not be the right place to start. In fact, our reverence for the truth might be a distraction that's getting in the way of finding common ground and getting things done. Now, that is not to say that the truth doesn't exist, nor is it to say that the truth isn't important. Clearly, the search for the truth has led us to do great things, to learn great things. But I think if I were to really ask you to think about this, One of the things that we could all acknowledge is that part of the reason we have such glorious chronicles to the human experience and all forms of culture is because we acknowledge there are many different truths. What she's alluding to here is one of the core pillars of Wikipedia, which is verifiability. Wikipedia is a tertiary source, like any encyclopedia, which means that its editors are not going out and doing firsthand research. Instead, we rely on reliable sources, like books that are published by subject matter experts or journalists at news outlets that have a reputation for fact-checking, and we then summarize those into Wikipedia articles about various topics. Some people are also really surprised to find out that when Wikipedia editors inevitably argue about what should go in a Wikipedia article, we don't necessarily focus on what is true. We focus on what is verifiable. This is what Mar is talking about in her TED Talk. She's pointing out that truth can vary really dramatically, especially on topics about things like religion or politics. And although it may seem really weird to people that we focus on verifiability and not truth, it actually works pretty well. And it allows editors who have strongly opposing viewpoints to productively collaborate on articles about contentious subjects. It doesn't work all the time. Wikipedia is not perfect by any means, and there are a lot of flaws that I could describe in great detail in a different video, but it does work pretty well. Now, this approach has been summed up by Wikipedians as verifiability, not truth. And like I said, this is a controversial statement, even among Wikipedians, but especially when discovered by people who are not Wikipedians and who don't understand the full context around it. And I think that's partly why, especially when you remove Mars' statements from the context that she provided in her TED Talk, people have really latched on to this as a sort of outrageous headline to suggest that she's completely unfit for her new role at NPR. People think absolutely Wikipedia should be seeking truth. How could it not be? The problem is that truth can mean many different things to many different people. So truth can be an objective fact, like what year I was born. There's really only one answer to that. And it can also mean statements that are true under some circumstances, like the sky is blue. That's generally considered to be a true, obvious fact, but sometimes it's cloudy or it's nighttime, and the sky can be blue or gray or black or pink, depending on what time of day. Truth can also include strongly held beliefs. Many people will argue that it is true that God exists, and many people will vehemently argue that it's true that God does not exist. Others firmly believe that the Earth is only a couple thousand years old, whereas pretty much every reputable scientist thinks it's closer to four and a half billion years old. And those scientists will get very upset when the first group claims that it's true that the Earth is only a couple thousand years old, and the first group will get really upset when the scientists say it's true that it's billions of years old. That's because truth can mean very different things to very different people. And if we're trying to argue over what's true, we'll never write a Wikipedia article. 
So for this reason, Wikipedia takes the approach of publishing not what is true, but what is verifiable. And hopefully those things line up the vast majority of the time. Where there is disagreement and where verifiable sources publish opposing statements, that's fine. We describe those opposing viewpoints and we calculate based on the reliable sources how strongly we weight those different viewpoints. So, for example, while the Wikipedia article on the Earth describes it as four and a half billion years old because the overwhelming majority of reliable sources agree with that, there are places on Wikipedia that acknowledge that there are people who believe that the Earth is much younger and outlines those beliefs. And similarly, we have articles that describe God or the existence of God and acknowledge that no one really knows if God exists and then outlines all the various beliefs in God or multiple gods or no gods at all. Now, verifiability, not truth, is not without its flaws. There are plenty of stories where plainly factual statements were not properly reflected in reliable sources and erroneous ones were. Unfortunately, reliable sources make mistakes sometimes, and ideally they correct those mistakes when they're made aware of them, but errors do happen. And because of that, errors can be propagated onto Wikipedia. There are plenty of notable people who have published horrified stories about how they tried to get Wikipedia to fix an erroneous statement about them, like a date of birth only to be told that they were not a reliable source and that they needed a verifiable, reliable source to make that change. This sucks, and it sucks when this happens. Um, this is a topic I could go into in more depth if you want. That would be a very different video. But the long and short of it is that it generally works. <laughs> generally speaking, we are much better off relying on statements that are published in reliable sources, even if those sources occasionally contain errors rather than just having each editor who comes along update an article to reflect their own personal idea of the truth. Mara's talk was describing this approach on Wikipedia, which I hope now that I've explained it, isn't actually as controversial as it maybe sounds in a soundbite. If you listen to her talk, you would probably realize that nothing she was saying there was really that radical. But there were a few quotes that were taken out of context by Rufo and republished by outlets like Fox News to stoke the outrage machine and further a campaign against a media outlet that is often perceived, especially by those on the right, to be liberal leaning. Another quote that Rufo has latched onto is a statement by Marr in a panel that she was doing about journalism, where they focus on her description of the First Amendment, which she says is a challenge. Again, in context, I actually don't think this is controversial. So on models, funding and costs behind technology and industry and the impact that it's had on the content, you said it's possible for companies to address the negative harms. Should this shift, and this is a really good question for where we are today, because I think we're going to have a lot of these stakeholders watching. Should this shift come from within the industry or come from the government side, a combination, civil society, another authority? Where are the solutions going to be found? Yeah, I, I'm 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 here to say multi-stakeholder always. Um, I think that civil society has certainly been doing their part, and and some of the most influential co like conversations that happen behind closed doors are often with civil society holding these platforms to account. It's important that I mean they have an outside of closed doors too, but often the more effective ones happen in closed doors where you can really have the give and take. Um, I do think that platforms have an opportunity to step up here and to really be more experimental. I have my criticisms, for example, about the Facebook oversight board, but you know, 130 plus million dollar commitment to really trying to rethink what governance looks like is, is not an unsubstantial commitment. And I'd like to see some you know more bold efforts along those lines. Some of them are going to fail. Some of them are going to be successful. We're all going to end up with egg in our face, but it certainly feels like it's the it's a better step forward than sort of sticking with the status quo. On the side of governmental regulation, the number one challenge here that we we see and is of course the First Amendment in the United States pro, is a fairly robust um, right, uh, protection of rights and. And that is a protection of rights, both for platforms, which I actually think is very important that platforms have those rights to be able to regulate what kind of content they want on their sites. But it also means that it is a little bit tricky 
to really address some of the real challenges of where does bad information come from and sort of the influence peddlers who have made a real market economy around it. So I think that there are interventions, things like political ad regulation, um, you know, advertising, the advertising, um, the sort of dark space of advertising, click being advertising writ large um, are real opportunities uh, in that space. But but in the sort of general sort of media speech space, I think that is really tricky. And, and we don't have a lot of good theorizing around what would work there. She's not saying that the First Amendment is bad or that it should be changed. She's just describing the state of the law, which is that the First Amendment allows platforms the right to regulate the types of content that appear on their websites. And she explicitly says that she thinks this is very important. But she also quite accurately acknowledges that because of this, attempts by governments to tamp down disinformation online run into issues of constitutionality. Now, I don't think that's really that controversial of a statement, even if you're on the left or the right. You might have opinions that maybe that should be changed or maybe it should be strengthened. She does not make such statements in her talk. But instead, these outlets have pulled quotes that say that the First Amendment is tricky or a challenge. And through that, they've painted her as an America-hating radical set out to undermine the country as she cackles from her throne at NPR. I think the real story here is the ongoing attempts by people like Chris Rufo and others on the right who are really trying to undermine the media, which we've seen in attack after attack after attack on NPR, as well as other institutions like the New York Times, who don't seem to understand that in giving Rufo a platform for these types of claims, they are just helping his campaign to destroy their institution and other media institutions. It's pretty clear to me that these attacks on Mar are just a convenient stepping stone in a much broader campaign to try to undermine much of the media as it exists in the United States which now more than ever needs outlets like NPR and people like Mar in charge.